Uh, okay, thank you, Irene, and, and everyone else. There's nothing like a lecture on discounting at 5.30 just before dinner. But uh, uh, I, think it, I hope this will be different. I'll start out with some pretty traditional uh, ideas about discounting, and then I, I hope I can move beyond that and make it somewhat uh, provocative. Uh, for about the past two or three years, I've been working a lot with evolutionary biologists, so more with anthropologists and, and biologists than I have with economists. So I'm going to try to bring that perspective to discount. So I'll start with uh, individual investment decisions, and I'll end up with few social insects like ants. So I hope this wakes everybody up. Uh, okay, so the economics of time. Uh, the standard economic model is a financial investment model. Most uh, appropriately used uh, as a guide to how individuals should make financial investments. So, if you have a, a, a pile of money and you want to maximize the, the, the long run return, you know, should you invest in stocks, bonds, or whatever people with money invest in, or you don't know, uh, and how much risk you're willing to take, and so on. So, it's really a set of normative rules about how people should make investments, not how they actually do make investments because even stockbrokers don't follow this model. Uh, so anyway, the, so the, the traditional economic uh, assumptions really go, you should ignore sunk cost, return to the future, count less, only the absolute amount of income matters, you don't worry about relative income, and so on. Okay, there's the excellent paper on this uh, is by Frederick Lowenstein and O'Donoghue, uh, Journal of Economic Literature in 2012. It's, it's a really long article. They really do a thorough uh, job about the history of discounting uh, and the, even getting into the ethical dimensions and so on. But uh, they say this, when the, the discounted utility model eventually became uh, entrenched, it was due largely to its resemblance to the familiar compound interest formula and not as a result of empirical research demonstrating its validity. Okay, time has always been a problem uh, in economic theory. Again, the standard, whatever you call it, Valrazi in economic theory. So here's a nice quote from Leah and Valrath in the 1870s. Uh, here he's talking about production, but he says this, there's still another complication. Once the equilibrium has been established in principle, exchange can take place immediately. Production, however, requires a certain lapse of time. We shall resolve, it should be, the second difficulty purely and simply by ignoring the time element at this point. So that's really sort of set the standard for the uh, traditional uh, approach. I'll do just a little light economic fashion. So this is uh, the present uh, discounted uh, formula. Again, sort of a straight line discounting. So what's the present value of 10,000 euros five years from now at a 5% rate? Again, you plug in the formula, it turns out to be uh, uh, 7,000 over 7,400 euros. This is a standard approach. It's called exponential or straight line discounting. The same discount rate applies uh, from year to year. Okay, hyperbolic discounting. Uh, this is a, an approach uh, favored probably by most environmental economists, like Martin Weizmann, who calls it gamma discounting, uh, Grisilia Chechelinsky, uh, and Jeffrey Hill, they call this the green, golden rule. And it's been uh, very popular uh, in climate change models. Um, and the, the advantage of it is it preserves some value for the distant future. With straight line discounting, even at a very small discount rate, 2 or 3%, then something uh, 100 years from now is not worth uh, hardly anything at all. Uh, so again, it's really the, the point of view from the point of view of an individual at a, at a given point in time. So these are my homemade PowerPoint slides. Anyway, hyperbolic discounting uh, looks like this. You can see, so the value of something, uh, it loses a lot of value at the beginning period, but then it levels off. It should not turn up there, actually. This is my bad drawing. But uh, so something loses a lot of value between, say, the first and the second year, but not much between maybe the 49th year and the 50th year. So again, it's favored uh, things like biodiversity loss and climate change, because obviously, uh, you know, the, the, you could, if you apply a straight line discounting with a low, low discount rate, you know, the total value of world GNP uh, in the year 2100 or 2200 is worth almost nothing. So, you know, we shouldn't care about future generations at all. Okay, hyperbolic discounting, uh, this is where it gets interesting, I think. It leads to inconsistent uh, temporal choice. 
And by that we mean in the standard model, uh, plans made at one time are still attractive at later times. So you don't change the ranking of investment uh, projects and so on. Inconsistent preferences means uh, the passage of time makes individuals abandon or regret uh, previously adopted plans. So uh, with hyperbolic discounting, uh, you get something like this. So given a choice between 1,000 euros now or 1,100 euros a year from now, most people would take the 1,000 euros now. It's kind of an immediate, you get it right now uh, versus later. Most of us would take the 1,000 euros today. But if you're given a choice between 1,000 euros in 10 years and 1,100 euros in 11 years, most people would, would wait the year and get the extra 100 euros. And say, well, you're going to wait 10 years anyway, so what's another year? So most of us think, again, sort of logarithmically, and uh, this is something that's uh, come out of the behavioral experiments. So uh, this time inconsistency also uh, tends to be confirmed by neurological studies. Again, there's a whole field called neurological economics. And uh, it's really valuable, I think, in sort of confirming some of the, the results from behavioral uh, economics. Uh, and it's, it's sort of a smoking gun. I mean, uh, different parts of the brain are active what we would consider long-term decisions as opposed to short-term uh, decisions. So it's a way to really show that these, uh, these behavioral experiments like ultimate game and so on, they're not the result of uh, sort of the, the fact that it's usually uh, students, it's, it's con uh, contrived research uh, uh, control group and so on. If there's really something going on uh, in the brain. So then just to name a look at a few of these anomalies uh, that with, uh, with discounting. <clears throat> okay, there's sort of a, a sign effect. Gains are discounted more than losses. People tend to be loss uh, averse. And by the way, I, sh I should say that uh, this, uh, working on this, uh, it's, it's a study group with uh, David Sloan Wilson, who's an evolutionary biologist. Uh, he and I got a grant to put together a team of people who have been meeting about every, uh, every six months or so. And the idea was to try to make some sense of behavioral economics uh, using evolutionary theory. Uh, if you look up the word anomalies on Wikipedia, there, there's something like a, you know, 150 anomalies. But, okay, that should tell you something. I mean, these are not really anomalies. They're how people actually behave. But there's sort of no rhyme or reason. I mean, there's one experiment will show one thing, another experiment will show another thing. Some of them are very similar, so how can you somehow make some sense of this? And we're hoping that sort of an evolutionary perspective will make us do this. Okay, another thing is people prefer to uh, incur a loss immediately rather than uh, delay their loss. There's one experiment where they, uh, they were going to give a, a people an electric shock. So would you rather have the shock now or would you rather have it six months or now from, or a year from now? Most people take it now. They so let me just do it now and get it over with. Again, even with discount, you should take it up later. You delay it uh, up the better. Okay, the magnitude of sm effect, uh, small outcomes are discounted uh, more than large ones. There seems to be a preference for improved sequences. So you would rather have a, a rising income over your lifetime rather than a falling income, even though the discounted present value might be larger for the, uh, the falling income. Here's another example, this sort of delays uh, speed up asymmetry. Again, sort of looking at these uh, kind of anomalies that people have found. So, uh, so subjects who were promised.